signaling he could soon be in the race. What this could mean for Joe Biden, Elizabeth Warren, and what Bloomberg famously said about then-candidate Donald Trump. Also tonight, the deadly plane crash right into a home, a father and baby inside the home, barely escaping the flames. The images coming in late today. Dangerous driving tonight, the major storm, icy roads, rain, snow, black ice from Texas, all the way up to the northeast. We're watching this tonight, up to a half foot of snow in some parts. Rob Marciano here to time it out. We have late developments in the search for a missing college student last seen on surveillance at a convenience store. News tonight of a suspect and the mother of Natalie Holloway now helping the family. The major bust tonight involving the U.S. military, federal authorities raiding a technology company accused of selling the U.S. military surveillance and security equipment made in China, but labeling it made in the USA. Chilling testimony tonight in the murder case that made national headlines. You'll remember the mother last seen on Thanksgiving with her child. Tonight, her fiance charged and his hidden girlfriend, now a star witness for the prosecution. And what she said were the final words from the victim. The scare on the water, two boats flipping at high speed side by side. And news tonight of a recall involving two million pounds of chicken. This is ABC World News Tonight with David Muir. Good evening, and it's great to have you with us here on a Thursday night. And we begin tonight with that developing headline, a potential shakeup in the race for president. Tonight, former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg. Is he about to run? This evening, the billionaire businessman and the major signal he might soon be in filing to run in at least one state's presidential primary just before an approaching deadline. Now, if he runs, what could this mean for frontrunners Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren? And Michael Bloomberg has a long history with his fellow New York businessman, President Trump. ABC's Mary Bruce leading us off tonight. Tonight, former New York City Mayor Michael Bloomberg is sending a jolt through the presidential race. ABC News has confirmed the billionaire plans to file paperwork tomorrow, putting his name on the Democratic primary ballot in Alabama. Bloomberg, a centrist who has become an active proponent of gun reform, is an outspoken critic of President Trump. I'm a New Yorker, and I know a con when I see one. A top Bloomberg advisor says the former mayor considers the president an unprecedented threat to our nation. But Bloomberg's possible plan to enter the campaign comes amid mounting questions about whether the leading Democratic candidates, Joe Biden and Elizabeth Warren, have what it takes to defeat Donald Trump. Well, if true, this certainly would be a shakeup. Mary Bruce live in Washington tonight. And Mary, we know Michael Bloomberg has laid the groundwork here for a presidential campaign with this initial uh, paperwork just before this deadline. But tonight he hasn't yet officially decided whether he's going to run. Well, David, Bloomberg aides tell us he is simply keeping his options open here, filing this paperwork that would allow him to run if he decides to. But we are already getting reaction from the campaign trail tonight. Bernie Sanders' campaign saying, quote, more billionaires seeking more political power surely isn't the change America needs. David. The first reaction already coming in. Mary, thank you. And to the other news this Thursday night in the deadly plane crash in California, right into a home, a father and baby barely escaping the flames they were inside. Plunging into this home, that crowded suburban neighborhood, fire quickly spreading, and that father and his baby getting out alive. The plane was bound for an airport about a half mile away from that location, and ABC's chief national correspondent, Matt Gutman, at the scene tonight. Tonight, the disaster in a heavily populated neighborhood, a single-engine plane slamming into a home, igniting an inferno. There's smoke at the end of the runway at 2-4. The airplane ported down. I was completely engulfed. It, it went up as soon as you heard the boom. It was still ignited. Miraculously, a father and his 18-month-old baby boy in the home when the plane struck, escaping alive. It's unbelievably lucky the way this plane went down and where that they were able to escape, and it landed right into their living room. The pilot, though, killed on impact. The plane equipped with a giant parachute system designed to save the plane from catastrophic crashes. That parachute visible in the burning debris, it's unknown if the pilot deployed the parachute or if it opened on impact. I can't speak to whether or not he did. I will tell you that it was fully involved, and that parachute material would have burned up quickly. The first emergency calls coming in just before 11 a.m. Multiple homes catching fire, emergency crews scrambling to put it out. Incredible pictures. Let's get to Matt Gutman. He joins us live from the scene of the crash tonight. And Matt, you've learned more about that father's miraculous escape from his home with his baby boy. 
Especially given the impact here. The, the neighbor right behind me said that she was feet away when that plane hit. It sounded like a massive bomb going off. And that father, David, he was in the backyard racing in, scooping up his son and running back out. Incredibly, both of them unscathed. David. All right, Matt Guffman tonight. Thank you, Matt. Next to the major storm and the Arctic blast stretching from Texas all the way up through New York and Maine. Dangerous driving tonight up to a half a foot of snow already in some places. And near snowy Buffalo tonight, a man was rescued from the Niagara River after two hours in the icy water. Tonight, rain and snow stretching across the Northeast. We time it out for you in ABC's Alex Perez from the storm zone. Tonight, that white knuckle ride on snow covered roads. In Flint, Michigan, icy overpasses are freezing much faster than the highway below. And in New York, not far from the famous Niagara Falls, first responders making a daring rescue. They have a rope attached and they have been trying to get him out. A man in the raging 51 degree Niagara River for more than two hours. Uh, I just kept telling him, we got help coming. I got you, I got you, we're not going anywhere. Bystanders cheering as he's pulled to safety. Nice. Good job. The massive storm stretching across more than 2,000 miles from Maine to Texas. All this after after a deadly day on the roads in Wisconsin Wednesday, the driver of this car did not survive after hitting a disabled semi on the shoulder of Interstate 43. And David here in Traverse City, Michigan, they'll be dealing with lake effect snow through tomorrow and then comes the coldest air of the season. It'll feel like 15 degrees here in the morning. David? Well, we knew it was coming. All right, Alex Perez, our thanks to you. Let's get right to senior meteorologist Rob Marciano live here in New York City. He's along the West Side Highway tonight tracking it all. Hey, Rob. Hi, David. Rain ahead of this very potent cold front, as Alex mentioned, another wave of cold behind it. Look at this on the radar. Huge stretch of rain from Texas across the south and all the way up into Maine where it turns to snow inland. That's where the cold air is seeping in and we've got the lake effect this course. Uh, the rain moves off the coast tonight, maybe an inch in some of the areas north and west of I-95, but it's the cold air that's a big story. Below freezing in the big cities tomorrow morning. I hope your home is winterized, Boston and New York City. And that cold air gets all the way into the deep south Saturday. Freeze watch is posted, teens and 20s for wind chills. And here comes that next Arctic blast for Monday, Tuesday. We're talking wind chills that will be below zero in this sort of cold setup. Some folks will be seeing some snow. David. All right, Rob Marciano, thanks to you as well tonight. Now to other news, and President Trump tonight has been ordered to pay $2 million as part of a settlement over his one-time charitable foundation. A civil lawsuit alleged the president and his three eldest children used the foundation for business and campaign interests. Tonight, the president has agreed to pay the money. Where will it go? ABC's Terry Moran now from the White House. The Trump Foundation was once a source of good publicity for Donald Trump, but in today's court settlement, the president admits he repeatedly used the charity for his own personal purposes, paying fines and legal expenses at his Mar-a-Lago resort in Florida and at his golf course in New York. And the president now admits $2.8 million raised for veterans at this Trump Foundation charitable fundraiser in Iowa in 2016 was then given over to the Trump presidential campaign to disperse before the Iowa caucuses. It's for our vets, and you're going to like it because we raised over $5 million in one day. The Trump Foundation also spent $30,000 on two portraits of Donald Trump himself and $12,000 for a signed football helmet of former quarterback Tim Tebow. The foundation has now folded, and today the judge ordered the president to pay $2 million to charity. In a statement, a Trump Foundation spokesman said it was pleased to donate the $2 million to worthy organizations. So let's get to Terry Moran. He's live at the White House tonight because, Terry, there's also news tonight in the impeachment showdown. Sources now telling ABC News that President Trump wanted his attorney general, William Barr, to hold a press conference to say that there was uh, nothing illegal in that phone call with the president of Ukraine and Barr declined. That's right, David. ABC News has confirmed that the president told aides to tell Barr he needed to get in front of television cameras and declared that the president had broken no laws. When he told the president of Ukraine to investigate his political rival, Barr, as you say, wouldn't do it. He did put out a statement saying no campaign finance laws were broken. The president is infuriated by this whole story. He says it's pure fiction. David? Terry Moran tonight. Thanks, Terry. Next this evening, a possible break in the hunt for a missing Alabama college student, Anaya Blanchard. Police have now identified a suspect tonight. The student was last seen at a convenience store the night she vanished two weeks ago, and police are now releasing these images tonight of a man at that same store that same night. And they warn tonight he is considered dangerous and possibly armed. Here's Lindsay Davis. 
An all-out search tonight for this man, Ibrahim Yazid, the 30-year-old named a suspect in the case of Anaya Blanchard, the 19-year-old Alabama college student missing now for more than two weeks. He should be considered dangerous and would be potentially armed. Late today, police announced an arrest warrant for Yazid for first-degree kidnapping. Auburn police released these two surveillance photos earlier. They say he was at the same convenience store where Blanchard was last seen alive. Two days after her disappearance, her black SUV was discovered damaged and parked here at an apartment complex about 50 miles away. Police say they believe there were signs of foul play. What they're telling us is that they, they know that she was harmed in the car. Blanchard's parents even meeting with the mother of Natalie Holloway, who vanished on a high school graduation trip to Aruba in 2005 and has never been found. Um, that's my baby girl, so I'm a fighter by nature. Um, it's not just my profession. I've been battling all my life, and I'm not going to stop battling for her right now. Police say additional charges and arrests are anticipated. There's now a $105,000 reward for any information leading to an arrest, David. All right, Lindsay Davis tonight. Lindsay, thank you. We move on now into the heartbreaking images from Mexico tonight as the victims in that deadly ambush on American families there are laid to rest. Three mothers and six of their children gunned down. An outpouring of grief today for the fallen members of an extended Mormon family. And we are also hearing for the first time tonight the messages they shared to let family members know what had just happened. Tom Yamas from Mexico again tonight. They came by the hundreds to mourn, then watched in silence as the coffins came out. 43-year-old Donna Ray Langford, her 11-year-old son Trevor, and 2-year-old boy Rogan buried today. Victims in that ambush in Mexico. One of the pallbearers, Donna's son Devin Langford, in that maroon shirt. The hero boy who walked 14 miles to get help after their family's SUV came under attack. This is devastating. See the bolt holes there. And tonight, an up close look at that vehicle. Holy Incredible shit. anyone survived. Look at the, the shot down on it from the top. Look at that. We're also hearing the moments relatives were first informed what had happened. Nine of their loved ones killed in a brutal attack. There's five kids sitting on the side of the road, got shot in the mouth, shot in the foot, shot in the leg. We have uh, the oldest boy of Donna's with us right here, and he's going to go show us where they are. The family sharing the voice memos from a WhatsApp text thread. They found Kenzie, love, and she's okay. They found her. <laughs> God. Many of those family members driving to the funeral services in a massive convoy, protected by police, no longer taking any chances. The family tells me they're not sure if anyone will ever pay for these crimes because the drug cartels run this area. But at the funeral, I spoke with the governor here. She tells me there will be justice. David, just an awful story, but we appreciate your reporting all week long, Tom. Thank you. And next tonight to the U.S. military and a major bust at a technology company accused of selling surveillance and security equipment made in China to the U.S. military. But instead, they had labeled it made in the USA. Here's ABC's chief justice correspondent, Pierre Thomas, tonight. Aventura Technologies promoted itself as the all-American security firm. Many of its products sold to the military, labeled Made in America. But tonight, the FBI raiding its corporate headquarters amid allegations that the company put national security at risk and that its products were actually made in China. The owners and operators of Aventura grew rich, trading our national security for personal profit. Aventura sold surveillance systems, including cameras, x-ray scanners, and security software to military installations, even aircraft carriers. But prosecutors say the products made the military vulnerable to Chinese hackers. Foreign adversaries and other actors could potentially access some of our government's most sensitive facilities. According to investigators, the scheme involved placing false Made in America labels on goods sometimes before shipping in China, and sometimes after they arrived. In reality, the only thing made in the United States were the lies I've insured sold to its victims. Let's get to Pierre Thomas. He's live in Washington following this for us. And Pierre, you've learned tonight that some of this surveillance equipment uh, made in China still could be on some U.S. military installations? David, that's exactly right. Authorities said today they're in the process of trying to find and remove all the surveillance equipment that's vulnerable to hacking. David. Pierre Thomas tonight. Pierre, thank you. We are also following an Amber Alert from Jacksonville, Florida tonight. And late today, authorities there reporting the mother of a missing five-year-old girl is no longer cooperating with investigators. 
Taylor Williams reported missing yesterday morning. Her mother said uh, she found her bed empty, the back door unlocked. Police officers, firefighters, search dogs and dive teams looking to find her. The sheriff says they do hope to find her.